Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the media launch of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers 2023-2024. It is that time again where we get ready for fleets to leave Las Palmas and, of course, sail some 27,000 nautical miles to St. Lucia, 2,700 nautical miles to St. Lucia, and, and it really is a celebration. If you've never been a part of Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, today is your opportunity to get in all the details as to how you can be a part of it. But just before we give you all the details you require, let's take in some highlights of the send-off. You just viewed there the send-off for 2022 for the, uh, the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. And, of course, we were expecting this year's send-off to take place on Sunday. It's 34 years of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, but 32 years that St. Lucia has been involved in it. And to commence the discussion and to give you all the details that you require for our 2023, I have joining me uh, to provide you with all the details. We have the chairman of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, Mr. Thaddeus Antoine, joining us this morning, as well as Peter Kozia, who is the event manager for the Caribbean for World Cruising Club. Good morning to you. And it's always a pleasure to have a discussion with the two of you. Um, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be back. 34 years of the ARC, that is definitely something to celebrate. And 32 years that our beautiful island gets the opportunity to be a part of it. Um, and for St. Lucians, of course, to get involved in the experience as well. Uh, Peter, Peter, let's start with you. Set the scene for us as to what we can expect for 2023 when it comes to the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. 
Okay. Uh, this year we have. Uh, um, I have the stats. <laughs> <laughs> I have to remember that. So uh, just under 160 boats coming across. There are four divisions. Uh, we've got cruising division, the racing division, the multi-hull division, and the open division. And the stats we w with 160 boats is because we have uh, a 44 catamarans, which is part of the multi-hull, and a trimaran. And um, these boats are much bigger than the average multi-hull, wider. So they take up more room than a single boat. So hence, we have less numbers of boats coming, but they take up the space of two, hence only 160. But everyone is very excited uh, about going. That's the, uh, the wonderful thing about getting ready uh, in the Palmas. And on Sunday when they start, uh, there'll be the weather is going to be light winds. It's not a perfect w uh, day for sailing, but it will be great for taking our pictures when they start off with the racing division. We'll be expecting the racing division, the first boats to be coming in uh, 10 days, 11 days after the start, um, as long as the weather is good. So they'll be the first start coming in. That's the excitement that starts with that. Um, and then the rest will follow later uh, again, or, or everything rests on the weather coming through. But the excitement when they arrive will be e enormous because when you think about it, they're crossing the Atlantic Ocean. It's a bucket list for, for many, many people. And then there's a lot of us who are never even going to think about crossing an Atlantic Ocean, much less doing it. So when they get here, they'll be so excited to be in St. Lucia. There's, they couldn't get a better uh, destination to arrive in than St. Lucia. It has always worked. It's the most one of the most beautiful islands to come into. Rodney Bay is perfect for uh, arriving in and staying at the IGY Marina. So they will have a wonderful um, uh, welcome when they get here as well. Indeed, thank you for that, Peter. Of course, let me remind you, those of you viewing, that you can do so via Channel 122, which is NTN. Also, the government of St. Lucia's Facebook pages, as well as social media platforms such as YouTube, as well as Events Company of St. Lucia, as well. Um, Mr. Antoine, of course, just listening to, to Peter's talk about you know preparations in Las Palmas. Um, we're getting ready to welcome uh, the fleet here in St. Lucia for yet another year and I know that when it comes to preparations for them when it comes to the experience that they're going to have in St. Lucia you can definitely speak to us about that. Thank you Homer. I'm absolutely delighted. Um, St. Lucia Tourism Authority in association with Events St. Lucia, IGI Marina and indeed the Ministry of Tourism uh, who is really putting together and curating along with World Cruising Club this event is always excited it's taking place in December um, we look forward to it because it also marks the period of Christmas as well. Um, when you heard about Peter speak about the participation, yes, we have some 160 boats this year, but we have some 800 um, crew um, on, on board taking part in the event. And then you look at the family members who are joining the event. So we're always excited about the ARC because it lends so much for St. Lucia, so much in terms of economic growth, um, impact for the, for the island. Um, as a tourism, in, um, tourism authority, we had to promote St. Lucia and, and generate people coming to St. Lucia, generate a yield for visitors on the whole. And how we do so is we invite international media, local media and regional media to be part of the festivities. So we host them. Um, we create events around the act in the IGY IG Marina setting. Um, you have issues of um, farmers, um, the creatives all participating and taking part in what's, what we do for the act. And so it's really, really exciting period for us. It's a, an event that really just invites a lot of culture and diversity to our shores. You see quite a number of people from all over, um, you know, participating in the act. And of course, getting here um, in St. Lucia. And I can imagine that this collaboration that you've had, um, that, well, that St. Lucia has had with the act, has definitely been one that is advantageous to St. Lucia as well. For the second call, so that shows you for some 32 times the ARC has finished in St. Lucia. And not, not just has finished, we also have the, the World, World Act, which commences in St. Lucia and comes back into end in St. Lucia. Um, we were told earlier that April next year we'll see the ARC will commence um, earlier this year in January, is now going to finish off sometime in April 
um, next year. So it just shows St. Lucia um, being a world-class destination, as mentioned. Um, the beauty of the island, the, the, the equipment and availability of the marina to lend itself to, such, to having this, those activities also <laughs> lends very well. Very nice. Okay. Peter, can you give us an idea of, um, in terms of diversity, the number of countries um, participating in the act this year? Oh, absolutely. There are 39 nationalities uh, uh, for the crew that are coming across. Uh, the, there are 29 national flags for the boats that are registered in different islands, uh, different countries, but yes, 39. Uh, there are 10 boats that carry children. We have 17 children under the age of 14, and they have uh, four or five, no, sorry, they have 10 different uh, nationalities from Brazil, uh, the English, uh, Sweden, uh, Germany, so, and Italy. So uh, it's quite a diversified group of uh, people coming across. Um, like was so said, it was nearly a thousand, actually it's, it's almost a thousand people more, yeah, of the crew coming this year, and not to mention the families that come across as well. Very nice. Now I know that usually FTA you always share with us some interesting stories um, coming out for, of the ARC, participants of the ARC. Do we have any um, s any of those special stories this year? Um, yes. yes. <laughs> uh, this year, ten of the boats that are coming in on uh, for the ARC will participate participate in World ARC as well. Um, we have uh, several boats that have done it before, but. Um, Let's see. We also have Jules. Uh, it's a U.S. boat. It's the all-electric Windello uh, catamaran, which was launched this year in September. So it's interesting to see how that will um, uh, bear up against the weather that we have coming through. Uh, Nika, which is a Dutch, uh, sorry, German, is a uh, one-off fast and big cruising catamaran designed for two people to sail around the world with. with. It's a 19-meter cat. Uh, Tiana, which is a French boat, uh, sailed by Regis Guillemot, claimed line honors in Arc 2019, which means it crossed the finish line first, not necessarily winning the division because there's uh, all sorts of um, rules that go through it. And, but they uh, crossed the line first on Arc 2019 with uh, his previous boat, Hallucine. So there are several people who have come through. Uh, uh, and have uh, participated before. Um, and like we're saying, there are 10 ARC uh, 2023 boats which will be joining the uh, World ARC that departs St. Lucia in January. Um, so they'll be starting a new lifetime adventure of going around the world. That's Asante, Freya, Nika, Promise 4, Saltaire, Second Wind, Skylark 2, Sofa, So Good, Solaris, and Whimsy. Don't you love the name? So interesting. <laughs> you know, so they're really good. And um, yes, as we're saying, uh, there's one other one, uh, Piment Rouge, which is a French boat. Uh, that took the line on as an ARC Plus uh, rally, and they are looking forward to taking part in the ARC for the very first time. Ah, very nice. Um, and from your perspective and in interacting with participants of the ARC, can you tell us what you think they usually look forward to the most in St. Lucia, for their arrival in St. Lucia? Um, the rum. Well, first, the arrival. <laughs> that would be a great one. They, are, they have actually got their, yes, I'll get to the rum. <laughs> yes. Yes, it goes without saying the rum. Uh, when we welcome them, we have this wonderful uh, welcome basket that we have from the events company of St. Lucia and St. Lucia Tourist Authority. And in that is the uh, rum of the country and, uh, of course, the rum punch. We always have to have a rum punch and fruit juice for the children, yes. Um, so, but they look forward to integrating, to immersing themselves in St. Lucia, not just the beauty of it, but the culture. As soon as they get here, unless they have uh, a lot of repairs to be done for their boat, they want to go out and see it, whether it's, uh, it's just uh, going across uh, the, the bay to Pigeon Island and seeing that and the culture that's there, they, they immerse themselves in going out and seeing the beauty of it, the, 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 the meeting people, uh, going down to Choiseul, Labri, seeing all the different parts of it. Uh, absolutely, they're going to visit the Pitons, they're going to go to Soufria, they're going to go east coast and Denry. They want to, one of the nicer ones that we have that we haven't had uh, since uh, COVID. Uh, was going down to Anstaray for the fish fry that they do on Anstaray. 
and it is the best part because they can sit down, they talk to people, they're right there on the beach, they get good food, good, good drinking, good music. Um, this is what they will come to do. They have, they have crossed the Atlantic, they've made it. They've actually done this and they want to celebrate here in St. Lucia. Thank yeah. you for that, Lisa. Um, of course, Thaddeus, you alluded to um, the economic benefits um, earlier. Uh, in the, the few minutes that we have left within this segment, I'd love for you to put a highlight for us, the, the benefits, the trickle-down effect, um, the PR value as well. You mentioned international media. So just highlight the benefits, of course, um, of the ARC being, well, St. Lucia being an integral part of the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, when I look around the room, I see several commercial partners there, and a very important commercial partners at that. And it just shows the, the mere value of the act because it's been associated with such uh, commercial partners we have in St. Lucia. Because there's, there's a lot of trickle down effect, there's a lot of spill off. I um, mean, look at the boats in fuel. So the fuel companies get involved. Um, the government in turn gets excise taxes or taxes off the fuel. So it comes back to the economy. If people have to eat, people have to drink, people have to communicate, people need financial services. All that has been utilized, and every time you utilize those services, that in turn, the government gets taxes, but also people additionally have been hired during that period as, as well um, to augment the, the existing staff that we have. So it, it really, really does help. It, it's it's a, a short period, but it's a great economic impact, um, certainly leading up to the Christmas season, which we know is a very busy season, but also a season of lots of consumption. Because when you have in excess of a thousand people coming into the country as part of crew, but it's also support family coming down as well, um, there's be heavy consumption during that time. So you could see how the impact, if you want to understand the economics, you understand how the great impact will be. And we talk about cultural um, interactions, cultural, um, the immersiveness of the, um, taking part in the country, lots of cultural activities. People want to see what is St. Lucia, but the authentic St. Lucia, the cuisine, all that is part and parcel, which helps generate um, economic growth in, in the country. Nice. And we know that we're definitely, definitely giving you, giving um, the participants that that experience as well um, and we do know that we have a number of media um, entities going to be here to cover that yes, so we're definitely yeah. excited about that uh, Tadias Peter I want to give, give you um, say thank you to you for giving us insight into that to setting the scene for us um, of course we did have the opening ceremony for the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers being held in Las Palmas and we want to give you the opportunity to take in a few of those highlights yes.
Thank you. Thank you so much for staying with us. And if you are just joining us, this is the media launch for the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. Of course, the 32nd year where St. Lucia is a participant, but 34 years since it is being held. We're giving you the opportunity to find out all the details that you require to ensure that you're a part of the, Saint, the Atlantic Rally of for Cruisers experience in St. Lucia. And uh, joining me is, of course, it's CEO of Events Company of St. Lucia, Ms. Noreen Sidoni, as well as the CEO of Export St. Lucia, Ms. Sunita Daniel, thank you so much, and the Assistant General Manager of the IGY Rod B Marina, Ms. Alana Riemann, Mrs. Alana Riemann, is here with us as well. And we're having discussions as to, of course, the experience uh, when the the participants of the act arrive in St. Lucia. We know an integral part of, of of the event is their experience in St. Lucia. Like we heard earlier, they're looking forward to being able to immerse themselves in St. Lucian culture and to ensure they they get as much as possible um, the the. St. Lucia hospitality that we're known very, very well for. Um, so, of course, um, Mr. Donnie, I'd love to start with you yeah. for you to kind of just give us an overview of the experience that we have just waiting for them uh, when we arrive in St. Lucia. Okay. Good morning and thank you for having me. Um, I've been part of this forum for a number of years, another 32 years, but, <laughs> but a number of years. <laughs> and I remember being a bit tongue in cheek and flippantly saying that ARC which obviously stands for Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, should maybe mean always ready to contribute. And I was saying that about the sponsors, uh, because again, we have sponsors here with us and some sponsors have been with mm -hmm. us over and over. But listening to a bit of what Peter said and what I'm about to tell you in terms of the experience, I think that acronym could also mean absorbing real culture, because that's the intention when persons, when the ARC participants reach to St. Lucia they are going to be immersed in, in our culture. Um, lots of activities happening. Uh, there's a new one on the calendar, but I will leave it to my colleague, uh, Sunita, to, to talk about it because it, we're really excited about it and the intention is to immerse the participants into the St. Lucian culture and to make them enjoy the authentic, real culture of St. Lucia. But we do have a number of activities and these activities are planned way in advance and it's planned through the ARC Planning Committee which consists of a number of agencies. We have uh, our sister agency, and you saw the chairman here, um, Mr. Thaddeus Antoine of St. Lucia Tourism Authority, um, Events Company of St. Lucia, of course, and we fall under the Ministry of Tourism, Investment, Creative Industries, Culture, and Information. So that's our parent ministry that's guiding this. World Cruising Club, represented by Peter Cozier, and of course, IGY Rodney Bay Marina. So we come together and we put on, or we plan a number of activities for the ARC participants. Uh, when they come here, and I believe uh, Thaddeus mentioned it, uh, there's a welcome basket. Now, that's a welcome basket of local, real, authentic produce for the participants. And even the basket is handmade by a local craftsman. That's to tell you the extent to which we want persons to be immersed in the culture. There's a welcome party at the beginning, obviously. This is happening at uh, Sandals Golf Club. And there's a closing ceremony towards the end, and that is happening at the Bosishu Indoor Facility. And at both the ceremonies or events, there is local culture, local talent, local food, absorbing real culture over and over. At the marina, we have a farmer's market and the Ark Village, where persons are vending and selling um, local garments, local artifacts, local produce. So it's all about bringing the participants to enjoy St. Lucia's uh, culture. Um, we're very excited, Peter mentioned it, that ARC Sunset Cruise to Ancillary is returning because the last time we did that was in 2019, just before COVID. So in collaboration with uh, the Community Tourism Agency under Dahlia Guard, we've reintroduced the Sunset Cruise to Ancillary. So they take a lovely cruise to Ancillary. In Ancillary, they enjoy the Ancillary hospitality, local food, local culture, local talent. So as much as ARC, resides at the marina and we have things for them at the, at the marina a lot of it is is spent getting the persons into the saint lucia culture so that that culture infiltrates the arc fest festivities so quite a, a, a an exciting real cultural experience planned for the arc participants this year 
Very nice, and we're definitely looking forward to that. Uh, Ms. Danielle, just before I come to you, because I know that, you know, the event that you're about to talk about is one that we, should, we can definitely look forward to. Alana, I want to, of course, welcome you once more. And for you to give us the opportunity or to paint a picture of, for us when the, the boats arrive at the IGY Rodney Bay Marina, um, I know that that is going to be their home while they're in St. Yes. Lucia, and a number of preparations need to be made in order to welcome them. Mm -hmm. So just give us an overview of um, you know, your preparations to welcome the fleet. Thank you, Uma. I'm happy to be here this morning. Our team has been preparing, I mean, for months, and I, and I will boast that we have a very competent team. Um, some of our teams have been with us for almost 20 years working through the app, um, putting our infrastructures in place, and I see a lot of our um, sponsors in the room are also some of our partners like Luselec who enables us to provide the level of support to the vessels. Um, this year one of our goals is to ensure that every single vessel has electricity on the dock and our team have been working tirelessly to get that done. Um, coming into the marina it's very exciting. I mean our teams uh, we've been planning for such a long time that we look forward to this exciting opportunity. Our tenants, um, our, and we've been working very closely with our local charter companies as well. Uh, we have a lot of um, liver boards as well, and they work very closely with us to ensure that we have the space that we need to fit every single vessel um, into the marina. Um, so I, I must say, coming on board um, late in the game uh, with the planning um, committee, um, it has been very insightful and um, um, a steep learning curve, which I've been very happy to be part of. Um, so we look forward, and our GM, um, Sean DeVoe, is currently in Las Palmas um, for the start of the race, which is very exciting, and we were honored um, that he was selected to be part of the team in Las Palmas. Um, and on Sunday, um, just to mention, uh, we have the flotilla who will also be um, starting in St. Lucia, which is traditional, a traditional rally that we do in St. Lucia um, to start off um, the flotilla. Yeah, yeah, I know. I, I definitely look forward to the yes. flotilla. Yes. It's usually a great experience to be a part of. Um, of course, one of the events that is taking place this year um, for the Act participants is Taste of St. Lucia. And Sunita, you get to give us all the details about that. It's the first time that it's being integrated as part of the Act. Yes, thank you and good morning. Um, we are having a Taste of St. Lucia, the Act edition, um, which will be held right across the marina. Um, it is very exciting for us because for a long time we've always spoken quite a bit about creating deeper linkages with, the, with tourism and the tourism sector. And I think this is one of the areas which will do that during the ARC. Um, in the Taste of St. Lucia ARC edition, we are having close to 55 businesses. And the only oh. reason we only have so little numbers mm -hmm. is because of the space. But the number of businesses far exceeded um, the amount we could really take on. So it will be a lot of small businesses um, offering their goods within a two-day um, period, December 15th and 16th, um, so that the ARC visitors, but the general public of St. Lucia can come in. You can purchase your gifts for Christmas there at the same time. However, the ARC visitors will get an opportunity to purchase from our local manufacturers from our farmers, um, some of what St. Lucia has to offer, which is really authentic and excellent and of very good um, standards. So we're really excited about that. In addition to that, we have two evenings of excitement and entertainment. So our culture will be put on display for those two nights. Um, I don't know if I should say everything, Lorraine, <laughs> but we have a lot of activities, yes, a kids, yes. a kids mm -hmm. um, yes. corner. Um, so there, there's a lot for people to, to see and look forward to. Um, so we're quite excited at Export St. Lucia to bring the normal St. Lucia in closer um, reach to the tourism industry and to ARC. And so that's very important for us. Um, today we have another event closely linked to the mm -hmm. ARC. Um, so there's a lot happening. We're actually opening a Taste of St. Lucia Express, which is a mobile experience oh, wow. at the IGY Marina. And we want to thank mm -hmm. the marina for the opportunity to do that. So that will be opening today at 1 p.m. Um, where you have a, a store, a mobile store, which will be placed right there. So any visitors to the ARC can come again and see what almost 50 of our small businesses have on offer there. So I think for us, the Taste of St. Lucia ARC edition um, is really about tying the normal St. Lucia to St. Lucian business to the benefits of um, tourism. 
You are busy, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So I know for a fact that you, you touched on um, uh, Laureen when it came to, to yes. Taste of St. Lucia yes. because you do have the details when it comes to the logistics and I hear that one of the, the things that we can look forward to given that we're in the season powered by the power of caring <laughs> is a tree lighting yes. ceremony. Can mm -hmm. you highlight for us yes. some of those logistics? Mm -hmm. You know I chuckled when um, Chair Antoine said that arc sort of symbolizes the, the start of Christmas um, because yes I mean you, you see arc happening in the marina and you know, hey, Christmas is close by. So we thought, why not marry those two concepts? So what's happening at the beginning of the Taste of St. Lucia, and that's a powerful brand, well done, mm -hmm. Taste of St. Lucia, the arc edition, there will be a lighting of the tree, a Christmas tree. Um, it's going to be phenomenal. It's going to really fuse the Christmas feeling, the Christmas tradition mm -hmm. with arc. So yes, we will have gifts for children, um, we're asking all persons to come on because it's going to be phenomenal and it's going to marry ARC with Christmas with the local culture. So mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's something we look forward to. Um, one of the events that we'll also be having for ARC is a, a theme night. Um, I'm going to struggle with the, 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 the it's <laughs> tropical, Creole, Creole tropical, tropical, right? Uh. But we're asking all the ARC participants to dress in something local. So your Taste of St. Lucia store would actually work quite well, so they can go and get a local mm -hmm. garb mm -hmm. to take part in that theme night. So little things that can, you know, bring the, the St. Lucian culture, absorbing real culture, ARC, to the ARC mm -hmm. participants. That's what it's all about. Very mm -hmm. nice. And of course, um, just in case you're wondering, that's taking place at the, the property opposite the Harbour Club, right? Correct. Yes. The yes. On the 15th and 16th, 16th of December. The 15th yes. and 16th mm -hmm. of yeah. December. Of course, we will op give you further details on that and you can always um, view the, the pages of Export St. Lucia as well as Events Company of St. Lucia. While we will keep you informed of the details of the Taste of St. Lucia experience, I would like to thank you ladies so much mm -hmm. for giving us that um, the opportunity and those details as well. We're looking forward to all of the great things coming for Arc St. Lucia. But we want to give you a little bit of insight into what the Taste of St. Lucia Expo is going to be like as it's been held, not the Arc edition, but it's been held in the past. So Let's take in that highlight.
Welcome back to the media launch for the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers. This is the, uh, the, the time where we highlight some of the entities who make this possible, possible, our sponsors, and we want to give you the opportunity to meet those sponsors. so much um, and we'd like to just say that the success of ARC is largely due to the inputs from our sponsors and we have with us sponsors who've been um, supporting the ARC for many years and we're very thrilled as well to announce that we have some new uh, members to our ARC family and today we just want to recognize them and of course take their money we have no issues with doing that at all um, ARC's success is highly dependent on all of us coming together and the collaborations on the ground at all levels and from all sectors. So at this time, I want to recognize as well Mrs. Lawrence Deloney, who is here from the Events Company of St. Lucia. She will be receiving on behalf of the entire team and all of the partners, the sponsorship inputs from our sponsors today. And we'd like to, of course, invite them to come up and to hand over their checks. We want to start with our diamond sponsors. We have Sixth Car Rental or Sixth Rent a Car. We'd like to invite the representative from Sixth Rent a Car to hand over his check. We want to recognize Mr. Pinkley Francis for the many years of support he's given to the ARC. We do need an auditor perhaps to take these <laughs> from you, but I'll hold on to them for now. We'd like to as well call on The Wave. The Wave is remarkable as a media partner for many years now hosting the chart the arc program and this year they will also be facilitating arc radio which is new to us but will give us an opportunity as well as our sponsors to speak directly to this audience the wave radio diamond diamond sponsor we'd like now to recognize our gold sponsors starting off with peter and company limited and i believe we have a representative here they're new to the ARC family. Thank you so much for coming on board. We look forward to having you with us. A 
another gold sponsor, Saul EC Limited. They go a long way. They fuel ARC, to say the least. And we have Deborah Edward here with us, who's the general manager. And we'll put in the values. You see, and that's the, that's the, the, the trust she has in us. We, she just asked her to write, a, we just need to write in the amount. <laughs> 21 years supporting ARC, <laughs> ensuring that the marine unit is fueled while they're out at sea, as well as our sponsors and our WCC team. We have as well Flo, C and W, happy to have them with us, ensuring that our ARC participants stay connected and that we can push all of our media out with high-speed internet. They also um, provide each ARC participant uh, with a SIM card, a free SIM card, with a starter plan, and thereafter, they have special offers on packages from Flo. Our silver sponsors, Massey Stores, St. Lucia Limited, so thrilled to have them with us. They're doing some special things for ARC this year. They're putting a Massey card in the hand of every ARC participant, which is amazing, as well as giving them free curbside delivery on their goods once they shop online. And they're also giving discounts on their delivery service to the Rodney Bay Marina. Thank you so much, Massey, for that amazing support. One of our silver sponsors, Blue Waters St. Lucia, new to the family. We're so happy to have them with us. We need to remain hydrated, and Blue Waters is our water of choice for ARC 2023. Welcome. We are happy to have you. How could we have ARC without rum? We have <laughs> St. Lucia Distillers with Bounty and Chairman, always on board. Every ARC participant will get their samples in their welcome baskets, but also every event that we have will feature these brands, Chairman's and Bounty. We're so thrilled to have you with us Boy yet Dinas. again. Boy Dinas. We have as well with us Lucilec, and you heard a little earlier about how they will be powering that massive tree for Expo, but they're doing a lot more than that. Lucilec is new to our ARC family, and we're happy to have their representative here with us, Mr. Omari Frederick. Caribbean Events and Services Limited, they're not with us, but they will be supporting us with tenting and a lot of other assets that we require for event setup. Our bronze sponsors, we have Mercury Marine St. Lucia. <laughs> happy to have them with us, it's not their first time. We're happy to have them here with us. And we also have Yanma. And for that, we will call <laughs> Mercury back. Because it's a family of businesses, along with six renter cars. So we have their unwavering support, always have. Last but certainly not least, we want to call on Shell Lubricants and M Motors. And for that, we have Harris Can here with us. New to the ARC family. Making sure that the vessels remain well oiled. Um, that's why they're here, Shell. No pun intended. Again, we want to thank our ARC um, sponsors. We cannot do this without you. We want you to know that over the next few weeks, we will be depending on you as well to help us promote this through your socials. Um, and we'll just be engaging you on the ground, your activations on the ground to ensure that you also benefit from the partnership. At this time, I think we want to just again recognize our supporting sponsors. So those we will meet virtually, but they're by no means least because they are the ones who are providing us with all of the amazing prizes that we will use throughout our radio promotions, throughout ARC Radio, as well as for the ARC prize giving ceremony. So let's cue that up and let's meet again our supporting sponsors.
Thank you for staying with us, and I want to say a special thank you to Mini Ross, who's the Branding and Communications Manager for <coughs> Events Company of St. Lucia, for guiding our sponsors on hand check handing ceremony, and say thank you to the sponsors for their contribution as well. A special um, mention to Court St. Lucia, who provided us with our beautiful set for this ceremony as well. At this point, I would like to have a conversation, say welcome, and a good morning to Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Tourism, um, Senator Gibbon Ferdinand. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, as we highlight, you know, from the government's perspective, um, the importance of Atlantic Rally for cruisers in St. Lucia. Thank you so much for being here with us. How are you doing today? Doing fine, thank you, and happy to be here to be part of the, the process and this product. Um, first of all, it's important that we understand the context. Um, I think I, going back to the days when I was a teenager, I remembered the ARC and what excitement it brought to, to our country. Um, I, I don't want to go too much into the time because it'll tell you about my age, but it was very important that we added that to our range of, of offerings as a tourism destination. Um, our government has always thought that it was important to continue to improve the products that we offer. Um, from the, whether it is the, the branding, um, we have the community tourism, a number of other initiatives that tell you that we must continue to improve. It is by no accident that St. Lucia is a 14-time recipient of the um, number one honeymoon destination. And now we've added to that the adventure destination and the nature destination. So it means that we continue to revisit and improve what we offer. With the, the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers, I'm very pleased with some of what I've heard this morning from our various agencies. And the idea of exposing our visitors and the participants to an authentic St. Lucian experience, is, it excites me. Because when I hear um, people talking about the rum, um, visiting Sofre and the lighting of the tree and a lot of these other activities that you know we we may take for granted but is really what defines us and gives us a little a little nudge you know as a, as a nation and puts us above some of the competitors so the ARC um, 32 years that's a long time and it means that 
that this brand and this product has to continue to improve so that it can sustain itself. So it's very, it's very good to hear that some of those new additions um, are coming in from the various agencies. Indeed, it definitely speaks to the maritime development um, in St. Lucia, as well as we know that it has had significant economic impact um, over the years. Can you highlight for us to give us an idea of what that is like? Absolutely. Um, we're an island, meaning that we're surrounded by water. And not only do we, we don't exist in a vacuum, we exist in a chain of islands. The Atlantic Rally for Cruisers could have ended anywhere else. And it means that we need to ensure that we, we maximize the very important resource that we have, which is the sea. So our, our maritime product and the use of the, what we refer now to the, the blue economy, making sure that we tap into that is important. And so we as a, as a country, as a nation, an island surrounded by water must ensure that we maximize. There's also the idea of sports tourism, which is something that we, we can improve. And while it may seem as if it's a, you know, a sporting event, but it has its spill of benefits, as was explained by the, the, um, the chairman of, of the St. Lucia Tourism Authority. You're looking at $5 million being pumped into the economy in a very short space of time. You also look at the, the PR and the spin-off effects, um, and that is very critical. The idea of the, the exchange of cultural experiences. So all of that um, ties into maximizing our maritime uh, product and using the, the, the sea, the water, as a very vital resource for our country. Indeed, we know that when it comes to the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers in St. Lucia, a number of government agencies are engaged and corporate partners. But not only that, the spill-off into um, smaller entities that, that, that are impacted by the ARC in St. Lucia. Can you speak to us about that? Yeah, actually, I took note of some of those that were mentioned when our previous um, speakers were on here. Um, I, I listened to them talking about the, the welcome basket, um, really giving you a taste of, of what we offer. I heard them mention the Taste of St. Lucia, which is an activity that really brings a lot of the other, the other, the other service providers in, in, into, the, into, the, into the act. Um, the lighting of the tree, you know, you have Lucilec and all the other agencies getting involved and almost exposing people to what is authentically ours. I, I also heard um, there was a, another one that was mentioned. Um, I can't remember the name, but there was another activity that, that was highlighted here. A lot of these basically tell you that you, you're trying to increase the participation of St. Lucians. And I must say that um, from a policy point of view, we've, as a government, we've always felt that we need to to improve the participation of our local people in, in the product, the tourism product. The more you can engage St. Lucians in the activities that, that bring our, our tourism um, partners together, the better. And that is where the community tourism that was mentioned comes in. Once you can bring that, have a little touch of that, these events into the various communities. I heard Chwazel being mentioned, Soufre, Ancillary, um, I want to throw in a, a plug there for the East Coast, Miku, you know, <laughs> I'm from there. And I think we need to get a little piece of that pie as well. We, can have, we have to think of ways in which we can maximize it. So when, you, when a St. Lucian from any part of the country, north, south, east, and west, can, can feel that they're part of this, um, there's more support, there's more buy-in, and it's, it's more of a, an entire country participating. So it's very important that all these various agencies and entities get involved and be part of the entire event and not only uh, not only that it is it is isolated to the sailing people or where 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 the event ends so i'm happy to hear um a lot of the other uh, participants really extending it to the length and breadth of our country you know just listening to you speak about participation one of the things that i'm thinking about you know 32 years of the arkham saint which i can very well see um some young men and women being inspired to to delve into the the maritime sector and maybe even being participants annual participants of the arc as well absolutely that brings to mind a young man i think um chavere luke chavere mm -hmm. he's the son of one of my classmates and i've been monitoring him in in the area of sailing I hope he gets to the Olympics. He's doing very well. And that, I would want to see someone like him um, start that race in Las Palmas in, in Gran Canaria and end there. And perhaps, you know, who knows, 
be one of the, the, the top finishers. But it's not only purely sport, but it's also um, entertainment, it's also fun. So yes, I think that is an option for sports tourism. And I hope that some of our young people, young men, young women, um, get a little, you know, a little more inspiration to get involved in the sailing um, sport or the sailing um, industry. And what about you, Senator Ferdinand? And would we we'll see you at least on the flotilla being a part of that experience? I'd rather take well? a swim, you know. <laughs> 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 but um, I, I think I think I'd rather I, I'd rather get involved from that from that angle <laughs> and leave and leave other things for the person's best best for the experts. Able. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Indeed, um, like I mentioned earlier, there are a number of government agencies who are. Um, integral in making this happen. We know that when it comes to the Ark and St. Lucia, they're touching a number of lives on the tourism sector as well. Um, people from taxi drivers to going into the communities and experiencing that as well. Generally, can you speak to um, how that impacts the development of St. Lucia's tourism sector and our place, in, our place on the global market as well? Absolutely. Uh, there was a mention of PR and that's important. The event brings a lot of PR into our country. Um, while these, these boats um, are here, there are other services that are required, engineering, repairs, maintenance, and that service can be provided locally. The, the visitors, the 1,000 almost of these visitors, they don't just stay on these vessels, they go out there, they patronize our, st our stores, they do some shopping, some of them do some dining, some of them, they want to taste whatever we have, they go to our small shops. So there is spin-off, there is impact. And they also participate whatever activities that are happening when they go to the various communities. They get involved. So there is not only economic um, benefit, but there's also integration, cultural integration. And I think sometimes you can't put a dollar value on that. But I'll tell you, when you interact with those agencies, particularly the cruise agents, and they tell you why St. Lucia is selected as a choice destination, as a choice place to to have a port call. It is because of some of those unique things that we offer. Very unique. Because most of the islands, you go there and you basically see the same thing. You get the same souvenirs, you get the same routines for the day, but when you have something different, something that is authentically yours and, and jolts the curiosity of your, of your visitor, they'll come to you. So I think that's an opportunity for us to showcase those things. And those persons may actually go back to the, how many, 39 countries? To, to sell St. Lucia. That's free marketing. And perhaps a few will come on another cruise or another, another flight. So I think this, this is key. And we must continue to, to encourage that, that kind of integration. Indeed. Now, I know that this is not necessarily your portfolio, but it definitely does help that uh, St. Lucia's corporate um, well, corporate St. Lucia is always willing to, to come on board and be a part of it and that they recognize the value of ARC um, in St. Lucia as well. Yeah, I, I was happy to see you know, what was going on there just with the checks. Um, <laughs> I, I saw Marcy with a huge one, but I didn't see them leave an envelope. So Marcy, <laughs> I took note. But it, it's, it's very important that there be partnerships. Uh, almost every industry, every entity, every department of our, our governments and our country needs the support of the, the local partners. Our business sector, our commercial sector, there's social responsibility that we all must take. And I'm happy to see that we have a few new sponsors this year. Um, I welcome them and it's, uh, it's good that they, they, they see a need to participate. Not just by somebody was mentioning, we'll take your money. It's not just for me, it's not just about the money, but it's also showing an interest in what's happening. They, these businesses employ people these employees have children and these children go to school they have friends they talk about the events they, they are part of it and that brings brings together what what i was saying earlier more st lucians buy into it and they feel a sense of belonging so i'm really happy to see the increase in the number of sponsors the number of uh, partners that are joining in this and i hope that um 2024 when we do the 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 presentations that it takes another 15 minutes and uh, uh, we double the number so that, that tells us that our St. Lucians and our business sector, our commercial sector is interested. <coughs> and that's very good for, for the ARC. 
Indeed, I heard earlier the mention of community tourism and the fact that a number of communities will be, um, of course, getting the opportunity to, to provide an experience for uh, members of the Arc Ancillary being one of them with their fish fry experience. That speaks well to the, the development of St. Lucia's com community tourism product as well. Well, absolutely. When we went to the Parliament to pass the community tourism bill, it, it wasn't just to change the name. It really is a concept that really seeks to improve the level of participation of St. Lucians in our tourism product. So whether it's the ARC, whether it's the cruise industry, whether it's airlift, whether it's the hotel industry, or any other in, uh, part of the, the industry or subset that involves our, our tourism product, the participation is important. And so community tourism is really, it has a, it has a place in the ARC. Um, and as I did mention, there are some communities like Ancillary, Soufre, um, that are already, they already have a brand, they already have a product. It is important that the other communities, Denry, Miku, Vio4, um, Swazel is, is coming along, the, the, the east, the northeast, Babono, Grosely, every community in this country can participate in a meaningful way in these events, albeit it's a very short space of time, but I think the chairman or somebody mentioned that while it's not a long uh, stay, but the impact, um, th those people are high spend people. The impact of their presence can filter to a number of other communities so that more of us, more of our people can, can benefit from the, from the pie. You know, that's a very interesting point that you're making, the, the high spend point Absolutely. that you ensure that you, there's a product that you can spend it on. Absolutely. Um, you know, you may, have a num uh, you may have large numbers, but there's not much impact. And a smaller number for a smaller uh, amount of time, they may actually, you know, spend a lot more. So that's, that's we have to tap into that because it's, it's a, so a short space of time. And the more you can tap into it as a country, the better for, for you. Nice. Thank you so much for that, um, Senator Ferdinand. Um, can I give you the opportunity, final thoughts, anything that you'd like to share? Well, well yes, yeah, thank you. I, I want to commend the organizers of the event, um, the various agencies, um, the SLASPA, the, the uh, St. Lucia, the Tourism Authority, Event St. Lucia, um, and all of the other agencies who've worked very hard to put on this event. Uh, we don't understand sometimes the, the work that goes into hosting such international events. So I want to thank them. I want to be um, express gratitude to our sponsors. They were here and they're here today. I want to thank them on behalf of the, the, the Tourism Authority, the government of, of, of St. Lucia. And I want to thank all of you who have in some way, you know, made a contribution towards ensuring that this time around we continue to improve. I, I also urge all of our other agencies who have not yet come on board to do so because this is a this is a St. Lucian event this is for all of us and the more we do that the better um, I also want to wish the sailors from across in um, Las Palmas in Gran Canaria a safe journey across as they you know traverse the, tra the Atlantic and we look forward to receiving them um, in St. Lucia and continue to improve the product that we have Thank you so much for that, Senator. And I want to say thank you to those of you who joined us for this media launch for the Atlantic Rally for Cruisers 2023-2024. It really is an exciting experience that we urge you to be a part of. Taste of St. Lucia is going to be a key component taking place on the 15th and 16th of December. And we want you to definitely come out and be a part of it. We want to say thank you to all the stakeholders making it possible. And of course, a special thanks to our sponsors who without them would not be possible. We want to give you um, the opportunity to take in some highlights and to say once again thank you to our sponsors. I'm Humadi Mark. Until next time.